Okay, so I'm going to have a little look at how we create a model of this mitre gauge. I'm doing it in on shape and I'm going to do it using something called top down modeling. So I'm going to create all the parts in one space using um, the kind of previous parts to, to create the models from. So if you follow along, hopefully you'll be able to quite quickly um, build up uh, skills to create models like this. So first off, we need to look at creating this uh, stock part. Um, and then we'll build the other bits from it. So I've got a new space here. Um, so I'm going to begin, as always, with a sketch. And this time, the part that we're looking at is not a, a simple rectangle. So we can't use either of these. We've got uh, like an angled line. So we're going to instead use a, a straightforward line to create from. I'm going to start my line at the origin, just making sure it snaps on here. And then we'll go across. So it's 80 across. And then we're going to come up somewhere here-ish. Come back, make sure that's horizontal, so it's parallel, and then snap back to the beginning. So we've got a rough shape. Obviously, we need to put some sizes in. So, for example, this one here from the top to the bottom on our drawing is 120. Um, and I know that the angle is 45. So we can put those in. Now you'll notice that they, this line here um, is not is not parallel. It's not it's not the right angle. I could put another. Um, dimension in here but there's other tools that are along at the top here that we can use which are quite useful they're called constraints and they allow us to connect different parts of the sketch together um, or, or make them relate to each other so what we want here is for this line and this line to be parallel if we come along we can see that one there two lines um, and we hover on it it has, says that is the parallel uh, constraint so if I click that one and click my first line click my second line and it's going to make those two parallel so without having to put a dimension on it, I've now got um, the, the shape finished. So that's the outline. Now I'm also at this stage going to add in my holes because when I extrude this shape, I want those holes to be in it because it saves me doing it later on. So while I've got this sketch up, I can put in my three holes and they're all 10 mil diameter. This one is directly below that one. And this one here is across from that one. So you see how I'm I'm um, allowing the I'm picking up the midpoint and I'm going along from it. You can see I've got a little orange dotted line that's telling me that that is in line with it. So let's go that for ten, and then some dimensions. So we are from this end here to the centre there. We're going to go forty-five, and from that one to that one. We are going to go 30 uh, from this top one to that top edge. We're going to go 15 and then, oops, that's not come out right, 15. And from these two here should be 30. Okay, so we've got a sketch, we've got the outline shape, we've got the sizes on it, and we have got our three holes put in as well so I finish that now this blade is 20 mil thick so we need now to extrude it 20 mil so if I hit that extrusion icon and hover over this space here you'll see because I've got those holes in it's extruding it with the holes already in place so that saves me a job later on now it's 20 now one little thing at this point uh, the extrusion is going in one direction. When I do the the blade, the blade needs to be in the middle here. It needs to be centered in the middle, which would be a little bit tricky to do um, if I extrude it like that, because I'll have to put a plane up here, work out the distance it is, um, and then add the sketch on at that point. So instead of doing that, what we can do is we can use this um, symmetric feature here. So blind means one direction. Um, there's various other options. Symmetric, if I hit that look, what happens is we get half of the extrusion going one way and half going the other. So that means that it is centered now on that middle plane. So when I draw my blade, my blade will bang in the middle without me having to worry about sizes. So if I OK that, I've got the, the main shape and I've got it extruded. So if I now cut my slot, so let's uh, have a think. We're going to cut the slot on, on that, that plane there. So I draw a rectangle in here. That will be um, in the middle. So let's go for a sketch 
um, I'm going to use the center point rectangle because that way I can line it up with the middle of my uh, stock part. I can middle line it up with the, this plane here. So if I click on there, and I come out somewhere there. So it's going to be uh, 60, and the thickness is only one mil. Okay, now um, one little thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this here is is connected or in line with that edge. So how do we do that? Back to these little constraints we've got at the top here. Just next to the dimension tool, there's one called coincident. What that means is to take two points and make them on top of each other. So I hit that. If I click on the corner of there, and if I click on, on the edge of here, then that's going to put that uh, in line. And I can now put my extrusion. Extrude that shape. Um, now I want it to be a remove um, and how far do I want it to go? Well I want it to go all the way through so uh, if I change the direction first off because it's going the wrong way I could put a number in but it's going to be quite difficult to work out what that is so if I just drop that arrow down there and I go through all then you'll see that it's taken that little slice right the way through the part um, and that part is now complete and we're ready to move on to the blade. So if I'm going to add a blade in here, then ordinarily I maybe would create a totally separate part and then use an assembly to put them the two together. But what we can do is, if we're using top-down modeling, we can actually create the part in this space using the features that we've already created so that we don't have to put as many sizes in. So let's, let's have a look at doing that. So if I'm going to put a blade in here, it needs to fit in this gap. So the best place for me to draw it would actually be on that plane that passes right through. So that's why we created this either side of that centered plane earlier on. So if I was to draw a sketch on this plane here, and if I go to the top view so I can see it, then we've got it there. Now let's, uh, again we've got a, a funny shape, we can't use one of the rectangle tools, so we're going to draw it. Um, and I'm just going to draw it somewhere up here for the moment. It's 300 long. Um, we've got something coming back like that. Make sure that one's parallel and then we're going to go there so now if i go to a dimension tool this is 60 and this angle here again is 45 and remember from before we want to make sure that these two here are parallel that's that now uh, at the moment it's not in the right place um we've got two things we need to put on it we need to um make the top edge in line with this top edge here so I'm going to use a coincident I'm just going to hit uh, somewhere on that the top line and then I'm going to maybe hit this corner here and that will bring it down and from my drawing I know that it is 105 mil from that corner to the center of this circle so another good reason for having already got that information on so dimension tool from there to oh now now that's picking up the edge so what we need is we need to project that geometry so I can get the center. And in fact, I can do the other, other two as well because we're going to need them in a minute. So dimension tool now, I can get that center 105. There we go. Now I've, I've picked up these three holes using the project geometry tool. So they are already in the right place. So when I create them in this blade, they're going to end up um, in line with the, the holes that are in the, the stock. So let's extrude that. Again, we're going to use a, a symmetric extruder, so it's one mil. And we're going to do the same here with the symmetric, so it's a little bit either side. So when I look at the, the right view, you should see that it is filling up that hole a little bit above and a little bit below. Now, uh, one thing we need to do is we need to tell the software that we want that to be a new part. So in your extrude dialog box here, we've got the different options. We've, we've looked at remove, that's what we would call subtract, that's gonna cut the holes out. Add, if we wanted to create another sort of bit sticking out, we can do add. If I just okay that, you'll see, I've created that blade, but it is actually now um, kind of merged with the first part. So it's added to it, that's not what we want. Often that's what we want, in this instance it's not so if i go back double click extrude three and i go to the last option here which says new 
what that's going to do is create a separate part okay if I okay that you'll see we've got an object which is a different color um, it's distinct from the other bit and down here in this little tree you can see we've now got two parts this one here which was the first one the stock I can actually rename that if I can spell it right stock and this one here which is the blade so I can read in that so we've created those two separate parts of the assembly in this single part studio we've got totally separate parts um, and we can we can hide them and you can see that there is the blade so they are separate parts but they've got a relationship with each other they don't move and in fact we've used that to create these holes without doing any drawings without doing any sizes rather we've used the information from the first part to create holes in the second part so it saved us a bit of time one more thing to do then which is the the three pins so again we can use the same method i'm going to select the top surface of that uh, stock i'm going to draw a sketch on it and i'm just going to use this tool again the project geometry so that's going to take we need to take these three circles and create a sketch of them uh, which we can then use to extrude. So if I pick that one up, select one, two, and three, you can see I've now got those three circles on that top surface. And if I go to my extrude, um, see how I, I clicked on sketch four in the in the tree here, um, or you could pick the circles individually. Um, again, that's the wrong way. So we're going to flip the direction. We are going to make that twenty. And we're going to make sure that it says new. Again, if I said add, I'd seem to be filling the holes in. If I go new, you can see I've got three new parts coming here. Let's OK that. And you can see they're different colours. So we have got it. So they have the, um, well, what's that? One, two, three, four, five parts of the mitre gauge, all created in one part studio with very little effort and without having to use constraints to link those parts together. So if you're on that stage, um, well, on this model, I would suggest that's the way to create it in Onshape.